paper with uh, something from Andrew Murray on prayer, and it's just really so good, and I just want to start out by uh, just sharing it. It says, there is a faith that sees the promises and embraces it, but does not receive it. When the answer to prayer does not come and the promise we must firmly trust appears to be fruitless, the trial of faith, more precious than gold, takes place. It is in this trial that the faith that has embraced the promise is purified, strengthened, and prepared in personal holy fellowship with the living God to see his glory. It takes and holds the promise until it has received the fulfillment and living truth of what it has requested from the unseen but living God, Andrew Murray on prayer. Andrew Murray is kind of heavy duty, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, but I'll tell you, I think that's a truth that is really, really powerful. And uh, in essence, to me, what it's saying is, you know what, when you're going through a battle and it seems like certain things are coming to pass, you know what, that's when we press in all the more. Amen? Amen. And in that time of seeming trial, God's grace comes in even a greater way. Amen? Amen. I mean, you know, the devil wants you to get bitter rather than better. The devil wants you to enter into a place where you stop looking at God, amen, rather than keeping your eyes on him. So I, I tell you, Andrew Murray is just, uh, well, I tell you, he has some tremendous teaching on prayer and on, on faith, but I really like that. Glory to God. So uh, I just want to encourage you with that, amen. Well, I, I tell you, at intercession, uh, Betty had such a strong word. She saw uh, these drab killers and the enemy as an army, but, and it looked, he looked very strong, but he had no canopy. He had no protection. And the Lord spoke and just said that, but he was saying that he could, man, he could bury him in the sand. He could just take him from above or left or right. Amen. Glory to God. And so we need to understand that. Amen. The devil comes and I, I tell you what, he looks stronger many times than he is. Because he's nothing compared to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So I thought that was a really strong word, you know, that, that, that Betty had. And I just really want to, uh, amen. I want to encourage you with that. Amen. All right. We, we, I'll be, I got pretty strong teaching. Amen. So uh, hold your hats on. All right. Glory to God. God has been speaking about going up higher. Amen. And. These are some things I believe that will help us go higher. And in Psalm 149, verses 6 and 7, talks about the high praises of God in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand. And there are, there's low praise, which is still good. Medium praise and there's high praise. There, there's swords that are not two-edged. They're just one-sided. Then there's two-edged swords. And there's 30, 60, and 100 fold in everything. Amen. And there's, you know, Romans, it says to prove the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And we can see that in, in anything. We, you know, in cars, there's, you know, there's 30 fold, 60 fold, and 100 fold. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, a Cadillac might be 100 fold, a Yugo. Remember those things? Well, I don't even think they were 30 fold. You know what I'm saying? Amen. You see it in clothes. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's 30, 60, and 100 fold. And, uh, I remember bell bottom pants. I think they were definitely 30 fold. They wore them in leisure suits. Some I mean, most of you are too young to remember that. But uh, but there's 30, 60, and 100 fold in everything in food, in restaurants. You know what I'm saying? In doctors. Amen. Yeah, isn't it interesting when you go to a doctor's office? You know they have their certificates and rightly so. You know what I'd like to see is their grades. Amen. <laughs> Seriously. Amen. Glory to God. Put your grades up. Amen. But in the last days, I really believe in my heart, and we're in the last days where evil is being called good and good evil. I'll be honest with you. Good's not going to be good enough. And uh, because the powers of the air are going to increase, whether it's in the context of coming against, you know, whether it's a sexual sin, whether it's in the context of theology, where there's a lot of people that once proclaimed one way to heaven, that are no longer believing that there's one way. Why is that? In the heavens, there is, according to Ephesians 2, there are principalities that will try to affect you. 
We're seeing things that we never thought would see before. And we've said this as well, that good is the greatest enemy of best. And, you know, uh, that'll preach in itself, okay? But it's in the air. And uh, so I'm going to share some pretty, uh, some good things, fun things, but strong things as well. I'll never forget someone that I'm acquainted with. Uh, they were uh, in boot camp and, and when the Vietnam War was going on. Their sergeant, he was tough. He was very, very tough. And, uh, you know, the, the man went to him and said, you know what, why are you so mean? And he shared with him this. He said, you know, I, I am tough and I am mean, but I want to let you know something. The people that come from my platoon have the highest success rate of coming back than anywhere else, than anybody else. And we need to, to share things we need to share. Amen? All right. So we're going to look at how to enter in to going higher in the areas that we know we have things, we have knowledge, we have faith, but God wants to take us higher. We're, we're going to go in five areas. First one's in the context of revelation. I don't know, when you share with people that are unsaved, 90% of the time plus when you say, do you believe that Jesus died for you? Do you believe that you're a sinner? Uh, you know, do you, they will tell you yes. They'll tell you, and the, the biggest thing is they'll, they'll say, I know that. But you know that expression, I know, will lead more people to hell than anything else. Because they think that they have it because they know it to some degree but they don't have it to the degree that causes them to make a commitment and do what they need to do. And that's strong. Amen? See, it's getting quiet already in here. Amen? <laughs> Glory to God. All right? When it comes to believers, you know, you know, when someone says, you know, do you know that, uh, you know, by straps you're healed? Or do you know that God is going to give you victory in a certain area? Do you know this? They will say, I know. But you see, God wants to take us from the 30-fold, and that's good. 30-fold's good, praise God, and God's merciful. At the same time, when someone says, I know that I know, that takes them into 60-fold. What's the 100-fold? The 100-fold is when you know to the point where just unequivocally you make declaration, you see the end from the beginning, amen, and you walk in expectancy. Expectancy is a fruit of a hundredfold faith, hundredfold knowing. Uh, I, I give this example different times, but I think it proves a point where a hundredfold faith is. How many of you have been to Niagara Falls? I think most of us, right, have been to Niagara Falls. And, uh, you know, these people that, you know, have gone across the falls on tight ropes and stuff, I believe that's tempting God, okay? But uh, there's a story up there where, uh, you know, a, a man went across the falls and successfully on a, a bicycle. And uh, there was a guy saying, you know what? It's amazing what you did. And he said, I, I believe that you could go across this falls backwards if you wanted to. And I just really, I'm confident in you. And the man that rode across the falls successfully in the bicycle looked at him and said, man, I'm so glad you came to me because I just bought a two-seater. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. A hundredfold faith is when God says, will you ride with me? Amen. And you say yes. Glory to God. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. God's wanting us to enter in the higher levels of revelation. And we're not going to spend a lot of time on the how right now. We will at a later time. But you need to know the difference between 30, 60, and 100 fold. We need to have humility, all of us, to say, I need more. Amen? I need more. And, and then we need to cry out for it. And also, we need to be with people that have entered into a hundredfold in certain areas. There's a man, I'm going to have him come either to the church or the Bible study, Dr. Charles Krantz, and he just has an amazing ability to turn any conversation into soul winning. He's just amazing. And, uh, but he has something I, I don't have. I, I need more of it. Amen. So we enter in to praise God, uh, you know, just to crying out for it and, and, and getting with people to do. All right. The second uh aspect or variable that we want to enter into in a higher way is love you know uh, you know one variable of love is compassion you know uh so 30 fold compassion is someone's calls you up and says i have a migraine headache that is just man it, it just hurt me so bad and you say you know I, I really care about you you know what i'm saying and uh i'll be praying 
60 fold is when you really go get on your knees and pray for that person. But here's a hundred fold compassion is when you say, God, let me literally feel the pain of that migraine. And Lord, don't let me, don't let it subside until I pray through and get alleviation and healing for that person. Ooh, my. Now our heads are turning. Amen. It's one thing to say, yeah, I'll pray for you. It's another thing to have the symptoms. And, and now we got like, you know, we go from Jesus, help that person. to Jesus. Amen. Because you're feeling the pain. You've got the pain, don't you? It's a different level of love. Many times in intercession, God will give you the pain of the person that you're praying for. Amen. And uh, God says, okay, or will you fast for that person? Amen. So love has different levels, amen, to enter into. A uh, part of, of love is giving, amen, giving of your time, giving encouragement, giving appreciation, giving finances, faithfulness. Uh, there's a, a man that uh, he's, uh, many call him the father of the Cambodia church, and I had the privilege to, to, to meet him years ago. His name is Paul, and uh, he was in uh, a prison camp when the Khmer Rouge took over Cambodia years ago. And uh, he was dying. I mean, he had very little food. They'd give him some bread and some water once a day. And, uh, man, you talk about love. He, would, he knew that it would cause him to die, but he took the bread that he was given in the water and he would pass it over to the next prisoner and uh, to his own detriment. But God honored it. And uh, it, was a, it was a miracle. Uh, a Cuban uh, doctor who was involved with the Khmer Rouge had a change of heart. Uh, and then in that time, you know, cut him loose from the prison and literally carried Sir Paul for a couple miles. And anyways, Sir Paul survived. And now he's one of the fathers of the Cambodian church. But the love that he had, amen, was just amazing. I mean, I, you know, meeting him was just a privilege. Glory to God. Uh, forgiveness. You know, we look at Corey Ten Boom, you know, belittled, degraded, abused by prison guards and, you know, in uh, World War II and in a prison camp, but loved the, enough that when the prison guard that did all these things asked for forgiveness, she forgave him and, and shared the gospel with him. Amen. There's numerous th variables regarding love. So we look at compassion. We look at giving, forgiveness. Uh, one of them is, is exhortation uh, and, and rebuke in the sense of sometimes we need to share with people if you love somebody, if you see them going the wrong way. Amen. And, due to our, and it can be that many times just to do to our humanism or it can be due to arrogance. Uh, but we, we need to stand up. Uh, I never forget with, uh, you know, one of my daughters one time, she was uh, older, but she was uh, just going to dri go driving and it was very icy. And I, I just said, you know what? It's not a good thing to do. And she wasn't real happy about that because she's older, but she's still on my insurance policy, so I had some clout. And, and I said, you're not taking the car. And uh, it wasn't, didn't go over real well. Amen. But. That night, a number of, there was a number of accidents and one fatality, uh, you know, not far from our house. And uh, she'd come back and say, I appreciate you standing up and sharing with me something that needed to be shared. Amen. Sometimes it's difficult. Amen. To share with somebody what needs to be uh, heard because you don't want to be rejected or whatever. I'll never forget uh, when I taught high school, there was a, a doctor who, uh, under the auspices of the rationale, that you know, he didn't want the, his son and other kids going out drinking places. He would have parties for them like on a Saturday night after the football game or whatever. The most uh, football team would go. And uh, a guy I know just didn't, he knew it was wrong. You know what I'm saying? And, but his son, I think it was a sophomore, and said, you know, everybody's going. And uh, long story short, he didn't stand up to his son. And he didn't stand up to uh, the doctor who was a seemly member of the community. And uh, on the way home, there was three kids, and his son was a passenger, and uh, they got in a bad car wreck. Thankfully, his son survived, but, you know, he was sharing with me that, man, the guilt, you know what I'm saying, of that. And because you need to stand up. Again, it has to do with love. Amen? 
If you love somebody, you share with them. There was a, a man a while ago, he was an apostle, and, but, and he, he did have an apostolic anointing, but just very, very uh, arrogant, to be honest with you. And uh, he went into a church and he cut positions into one guy who was a great assistant pastor. And then he lost his health insurance and he had something physically wrong. And um, it, was, it was a bad deal. I mean, it, it was just a wrong thing to do. And, you know, I just said, you know what? I, I went to him. I said, how could you do that? You know what I'm saying? Uh, but everybody else was, you know, afraid to do it. And, uh, but the Bible says in 2 Peter 1, 1, true apostles are servants, amen, and apostles. But sometimes, you know, you have to uh, just share. I'll never forget, I would uh, helping out a church, and there was a guy there, and uh, one of the elders, and he, he was just as arrogant. I never met anybody this arrogant. And uh, at the same time, he was an, there was an anointing there as a good guy in, in one way. And, and I, I just, you know, I asked the uh, rest of the board, I said, I, I, no, I said, it was at a meeting I was, I was at. And I was helping this church. And I just, you know, told him, I said, you know, you're one of the most arrogant people I've ever met. And here, he had an affair with a babysitter or something. And it was like no big deal. And then somebody else was just struggling with something that wasn't half as bad. And he was saying that they couldn't be. In a, and I just lost it. You know what I'm saying? But amen, love shares what needs to be shared, amen, glory to God, and uh, but we need to do that, I had a man that was uh, just felt unjustly treated, uh, I mean someone hurt him really bad, and rather than getting better, he got bitter, you know what I'm saying, and, and I told him, I said, you know what, it's going to be to your own detriment, to your children's detriment, to, to your wife, it, it, you know, because he just, man, he couldn't let it go what happened to him. Someone really hurt him real bad. And uh, I don't get into all the details, but I said, you can't do this. And he got involved in drugs. And, and uh, I'll just say this. I said, don't go where, you know, to this area to get the drugs. I said, my God, if you're going to do drugs, don't go there to get them. And, uh, you know, he's not with us today. It's not a good deal. You try to do what you can do, amen, but people have to listen as well. And, and sometimes God will move in a supernatural way. I was at a church near Philadelphia, and man, I was preparing for the service, and I saw, I saw, you know, two people in a car, and I saw the, the car, and I saw this lady's face, and they were in immorality, you could just sense. So I, you know, Pastor and I are good friends, and I shared it from the pulpit. And I said, someone, I don't know if it relates to you or whatever. This lady come up at the end of service. I said, don't raise your hand if it's you. <laughs> and, uh, and she came up, and it was her. And, uh, but she did enter into repentance, praise God. And I, I could give numerous examples like that. But usually, you know, you, you do what you can. Amen? Glory to God. I'll just give two more examples uh, of this. But when you love somebody, you do speak what you need to speak. God, uh, a guy we're ministering to. And... Uh, Man, again, just a lot of arrogance. And he was telling the, uh, the, the lady he was with, they, were, they weren't engaged with thinking about it. It was like this guy had some problems with his, uh, I don't know, was teeth, cheekbone or whatever. But then he's telling his wife she had to get surgery because he didn't like the way her faith looked. And I, I, I should have said something. It just drove me nuts. And I'm trying to be polite, you know what I'm saying? And I should have said something, and she went ahead and did it. And man, and then he took off anyways. He was from Ukraine or Georgia, one of the Russian satellite places. But when you love somebody, you speak what needs to be spoken. I'll just share one more example. Uh, we had, uh, no, we had a, Kathy and I had a friend, and uh, she'd come to our house. I hadn't seen her for a while, and she... Uh, I think she, I'm trying to think how old she was, maybe 40 or something. And she was sharing how, you know, she was with a guy now and good guy. He, he loved the Lord, but I, I didn't get a good witness about it. I hardly ever try to intervene. People need to hear God for themselves. But she uh, entered in to tell us that she put out a fleece. And, I, you know, and she said, if this man's for me, he said, I'm going to go to a very remote area I mean you know where nobody I mean we're talking out in the middle of the country and uh they have like a little general store there type of thing and Lord if you want 
you know, me to be in relationship with this man, have this guy showed up. To show up, and sure enough, he did. And uh, so she's telling us this, but I can tell she's hesitant. And, and the Lord's, you know, because I care about her. We care, we said, and I, I just went, you know, very nicely said, you know what? That's not God. Because this guy's not walking with, I said, he's going to be, he's going to hurt you, not help you. And she wasn't real happy with that, and she cried. But over time, she received it and uh, didn't go on with that relationship, ended up marrying just a really good guy, pastor, and a uh, well, worship pastor, and a uh, really good guy, and, and, you know. But amen, but that's part of love, amen. Uh, fourth, you know, 1 Corinthians 13, believing in people, amen, is part of love. Uh, you know, but what I'm saying is there's levels of love, Amen. When you love somebody, you do what they need to do. 1 Corinthians 13, we won't get into all of it, you know, but you be- love hopes all things, believes all things. Amen. Love never fails. And lastly, in the context of love, it's consecration. Jesus said in John 14, 31, so that the world may know that I love the Father, I go to the cross. Obviously, he went to the cross for us as well. But consecration, Amen. Love involves consecration. And sometimes it's easier said than done. You know, to let go and let God. You know, uh, sometimes, you know, we just need to enter into place and say, God, uh, I I call it having a crazy day. Some people say, oh, I have crazy days every day of the week. But uh, what I mean by crazy day is just saying, God, I want to, today, I'm going to let go, let God. I want to talk to whoever you tell me to talk to. I mean, if you want me to preach in the street, I'll preach in the street. I'm going to have a crazy day. And I'm just going to do whatever you want me to do. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I I tell you what, not many people, I think, would do that. You know, in consecration, Lord, 30-fold consecration is, Lord, I'll go here if you want me to go. 60-fold consecration is, I'll go anywhere but a few places. A hundredfold consecration is, Lord, I'll, I'll go wherever you want me to go. And very few people are, you know, enter into that because, again, they think they're going to end up marrying an anteater in Africa and it's going, and life is going, not going to be good. Amen? And I'll tell you what, I, I, all of us are like that. I'm sure many times when I thought the Lord might have been calling us to, you know, a different place and Kathy was very consecrated quickly. And I wasn't so consecrated. It took me a long time. And then God said no, you know, to go in there. But amen. All right. So that, that's love. Amen. Let's enter into the next one. Sure is quiet in here today. Amen. Glory to God. See, to enter into different levels to go higher, there's a price to pay. Amen. And there is decisions to be made. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, humility, I mean humility with God. Zechariah 4, 6, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. We need to know that, amen, God will not share his glory with anyone in any way at any time. I mean, it's all about God, amen. But once in a while, we think that we had maybe a little bit more to do with it than we really did, and it's not a good thing, amen. Humility is knowing, again, it's all about God, amen. Philippians 2, 3, I, I mean, uh, wow. You know, esteeming one another higher than yourself. Wow. You know, I shared this example different times, but it bears repetition. You know, there was a woman who was apostolic, and she was going out to help churches throughout the country. And she had two assistant pastors, and she said, you guys just figure out who's going to be head pastor. She should never have done that. She should have pointed it. But uh, so the one guy says, I think I should be the head pastor. The other guy says, I should be the head pastor. Not one of these guys would humble themselves for the sake of the body of Christ. And the one guy takes over the church. Another guy goes down the road. And uh, here's what's scary. The church was called the Church of Unity. So the guy went down the road and started the second Church of Unity. (laughs) It would be funny if it wasn't so sad. You know what I'm saying? But why? See, they didn't enter into humbling themselves because they were afraid that they were going to get hurt. They were afraid that they were going to lose. Amen? A lot of times in entering into higher ground, it looks like the decision you have to make is going to cause you to lose or be hurt. Amen? But the bottom line is that's not the case. And uh, God is is wanting to help us, not hurt us. Amen? 
And uh, I'll never forget, you know, in the context, you know, uh, of sharing what we need to share in love. Uh, we had, when we first started a church, we had a wonderful couple, couple leading, a, helping us lead a, a cell group. And uh, they had experienced loss, uh, you know, of a child. And, 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 and understandably so, they were distraught by that, but uh, never quite got over it. And, and they kept saying, well, you know, God could take your child at any time with that. And I had to sit down with them and say, you guys are awesome. I mean, they love God big time, but you can't share this. You, you can't share it again. Otherwise, you know, you just can't lead this group. And, and, and the one, the, the husband was good with, but the wife wasn't. And I understood, you know what I'm saying? But we had to say, you know what? It's not going to work. And, uh, but the bottom line is you have to make a decision, amen, to go higher. Amen? I know this is strong stuff, but, you know, so whether it's, we have to esteem one another higher than ourselves, whether it's husbands and wives, whether it's in the church, whether it's, uh, you know, friendships, we esteem another. Uh, a lot of you are aware of the Zeus Street Revival uh, that ushered in, uh, you know, uh, the sp- a lot of spirit-filled churches uh, in like Assembly of God in 19, I believe, 03. It followed the Welsh Revival with Evan Roberts in and, and Wales. And uh, one of the main men involved in it was a man named Brother Seymour. He was an African-American man. And at that time, you know, whites and blacks didn't get together. and But he would just... He could preach real well, but he said, you know what? I'm just going to put my head underneath. He'd go underneath a bunch of boxes in the back room and just intercede. Nobody knew he was there. And, and when Frank Bartleman, who chronicled the revival, you know, he said he was one of the main reasons for the revival. But he never wanted to be seen. Amen? That's humility. Amen? Glory to God. Amen? Humility is saying we need more. Amen? It's saying we need more. Humility is, man, when you feel you've been wronged, instead of taking off, you stay. Amen. John Bevere has a lot of good teaching, amen, on this. You know, somebody says, well, I feel like I've been wronged. Well, guess what? You know what? You'll live. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So what happens is, like whether it's in the church especially, you know, God will honor you and bring your righteousness to light. But it's that, you know, but a lot of times, humility, like Joyce Meyer, well, I sense I got a Joyce Meyer anointing today. Amen? Glory to God. But, uh, you know, Joyce Meyer says, you know, different times when you've been wrong, God doesn't give you even the right to say you, you are right. Man, isn't that tough? Wow, that's humility when you know you're right, and God says, don't tell anybody you're right. Wow, well, God will take care of it. Amen? Wow, that can be tough. Amen? But God will honor it. But that's humility. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, Opportunity versus ordination. I think there's only been three times where I I had uh, two of them were large churches where uh, really it was years ago where uh, I had board members come in because people, uh, these pastors were retiring and uh, or well, one was going off to uh, go on the field more because he was apostolic and uh, and, and, you know, uh, both times, I mean, they're very large churches, two of them, third one wasn't. But uh, I could have entered into that, and I might have been a mess because I was younger. But the bottom line is that uh, out of respect for the pastor, I said no. Because they had a theology that was much different than mine. You know, uh, one church was very prophetic, which was great, but very different than, you know, the word of faith. Another church was just very missions oriented, which is awesome. And I'm all for both the prophetic and missions, but it, I, I would have really wrecked the vision of that church. And I, so out of respect, you know, uh, you know I, I said no both times. And, but a lot of people won't do that because of selfishness, to be honest with you. And both those churches, someone took them that shouldn't have taken them. And boy, I tell you, that's not a good deal. But amen. All right. So, Humility, again, it's being John 5, 19. It's doing what Jesus, you see Jesus telling you to do. Amen? Sometimes it doesn't seem like the, you know, the, the, what you want to have done. Amen? Glory to God. So, uh, again, we're talking about entering in the higher levels. Glory to God. And, and to do this, amen, you've got to make decisions. All right. 
A lot of that, some of that was spinach, but you know, glory to God, spinach is good, amen, for the, amen for your diet, glory to God. I think we'll get more amens on the next two, but uh, glory to God, so that probably tells us we need to preach more on the, the ones we just went over, all right? <laughs> so, all right, so the, the, the next one, number four, is intimacy with the Lord. And in the last days, Satan will surely... Uh, Man, his, his power is going to increase because people are going to let it increase through them. But God's way is always raising a standard that's greater than the enemy. Amen? Glory to God. And the primary standard that he raises is intimacy. Go with me, if you would, to John 17. Glory to God. Hallelujah. John 17. In John 17, we know this is in the context of the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus is getting ready to enter into being the, the sin offering, becoming sin and entering into, like we've said many times, becoming like us in our humanness, our sinfulness, so we could become like him in his righteousness. And he asked for one thing. Glory to God, he asked for one thing. I shared this at the men's breakfast on yesterday. But I want to share it in this context. What he asked for, he says, Father, the hours come, John 17, 1, glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. Now here's what's amazing to me. If Jesus needed this, we sure do. He's saying, God, I need you to give me an experience. I need you to come to me in an amazing way even greater than you did in, on Transfiguration Mountain. I need you to come in a way that is going to be commensurate with what I have to go through. And then in John 17, 5, he stipulates the glory that he needs to enter into when he says, and now, not tomorrow, now, O Father, glorify thou me together with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the worlds were. Wow. So he's saying, I need to enter in to this level of glory, to this level of your presence, to this level of, man, of manifestation of experience. Wow. And obviously it happened. You know, I gave the example when Elijah, I'm sorry, Elijah was running from Jezebel. You know, amazingly, a great man of God could fall into that. You know what I'm saying? He slew the prophets of Baal. Fire come down from heaven, slew the prophets of Baal, and now he's running from Jezebel. And uh, the Lord came to him in his mercy, and uh, he hadn't eaten anything, and an angel made him a cake. Uh, it said, on Saturday, it was the first angel food cake. Amen? Glory to God. You got to forget those devil's food cakes. Amen? And uh, so first angel food cake, right? But he went on the strength of it for 40 days. Man, if you could figure out what was in that, you could make a billion dollars, huh? Amen? Glory to God. So there was something in that cake that vitalized him, that strengthened him in an amazing way. Amen? So what happens is that something happened when Jesus prayed this that enabled him to endure Calvary. So what's this have to do with us? If we're going to go higher, amen, then we're going to have to enter in to daily experiences of glory that transcend the norm. Again, we're talking about 30, 60, and 100 fold. You see, it all comes down to the connotation you ascribe to good. Some, someone says, you know what, I, you know, the presence of God was like this, it was amazing. Well, how amazing was it? You know what I'm saying? God wants us to enter into a place, and I'm not going to say this is going to happen every day, but I, on Friday night I had you know really neat experience. I was tired, and but just decided to you know spend some time with the Lord at the end of the day, is towards midnight, and uh, well about eleven o'clock, and uh, man, God came in just a very pronounced fashion. It's like it, it's like the, the written word just stood up in a three D fashion, and, and and it was awesome. You know what I'm saying, but. God wants us to walk in a way that the eyes of our understanding, that, that I, I mean are, are open in a profound fashion, where we experience Jesus 
His presence, His voice, just like today in worship when that word of knowledge came and we prayed. I mean, I believe that that, that woman, glory to God, with that name Cindy was, I, I believe Jesus, a miracle occurred. Glory to God. But we need to enter in, amen, to that which is beyond the norm in our quiet time, in, in our church time. Uh, glory to God. Uh, oh, hallelujah. When you're praying, amen, w- with a spouse, with a friend, we need to enter into this. And what's this have to do with 30, 60, 100 fold? Well, again, we need to know the difference between 30, 60, 100 fold. And then we need to pay a price, amen. If God says, you know what, I want you to increase your quiet time, as is reasonable. God's not going to have you increase your quiet time where it affects your job or, or you know, type of thing or whatever, but in, 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 that's reasonable. And you enter in and he says, you know what, I want you to enter into the quiet place with me. You know, maybe it's from 7 to 7.30 in the morning and maybe it's from 10 to 11 at night. And we need to be obedient to it. Amen. It's not to hurt us. Amen. It's to, so the heavens can open up so you can go higher. Praise God. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. And what if God says, you know what? Every Thursday, I want you to fast for a day. Well, our flesh hears that. And our flesh says, you know what? Everything's okay. I don't need to fast every Thursday. Amen. Your, you know, your, your flesh says, man, last time I fasted, I got sick. Well, you don't have to fast food necessarily. It might be whatever, you know, God leads you. But the bottom line is, see, now we're saying we want to go higher. Amen. So God says, okay, if you want to go higher, here's what I I want you to do. Praise God. So now there's a decision to be made. And again, your flesh is always going to say, I don't need to. Your flesh is always going to say, you know what? It's not going to do this for me. But the bottom line is, man. In these last days, God's calling us to a place where we enter in to his glory in a way we've never entered into it before. Amen? And we need to know what that's like. So it can become your norm. It can become your baseline. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. And we, we, we start to enter into that. We start to go higher. And then the last one before we uh, just share of how to enter into this is joy excitement and expectation as we enter in i mean to experiential reality with jesus as we enter into this your joy begins to be full man you get excited every day in his expectation not just some days but man every day there's a joy there and an excitement level glory to god and an expectation every day amen We should be expecting to experience the presence of God in a profound fashion. We should expect to enter in to an experiential glory with God. And joy, I understand, you know, is of the spirit. And excitement or happiness is of the soul. I had someone come up and says, well, God wants you to be joyful but not happy. And and I I quote the verse, happy are the people as God is the Lord out of Proverbs. Yeah, I understand joy is resident within your spirit, amen, all the time. But God wants your soul to be happy as well, amen? He wants you to be excited, amen, emotionally, amen? If you can get excited about a sporting event, nothing wrong with that. You know, just just to put this out there, the Penguins are going on, amen? They won the series, amen? Nothing wrong with that. Got a little excited about that, amen? Praise, you can, but you can get infinitely more excited, about Jesus. Amen. Amen. And then we enter into expectancy. And see, again, we're talking about different levels of walking with Jesus. So we have to ask ourselves, okay, what's my joy level? You know, I, I you know, different times, you know, the Lord will deal with me about some different things. And, uh, you know, I have mentors just like, you know, uh, and I go with people and, and they speak in the, my life. And, you know, bottom line is that, you know, but I have to ask myself, although, uh, you know, what's my joy level like? You know, is it a scale one to ten? You know, ask yourself right now, what's your joy level like? Amen. Right now, if you had to pick from one to ten, you know, what what's it like? You know, is it a five? But, you know, that might be 30 fold. Is it a. Seven and a half, that might be 60 fold, or is it a 10, 100 fold? God wants the joy of the Lord is your strength, amen? amen. 
Praise God. But then it will lead you into excitement. Woo! Excitement just, man, you wake up, glory to God, and you know there's trials. You know there's challenges. Amen? And we're not discounting that. But you're excited because, woo, glory to God, you know that Jesus is going to come to bat for you. Amen? Glory to God. You know, we shared this example before, but I like it so much. David Miner, who... Uh, very prophetic pastor from uh, Cottersport area. And uh, he was facing a, a very difficult trial. And uh, glory to God. And uh, actually he was in a hospital room and uh, just fighting a, a, a trial. And uh, just before that, he was at a church service and down in Virginia, Virginia Beach. And uh, he had given uh, $5,000 to a building fund effort and he really didn't have that much money so and then the next day he finds himself in the hospital and he's just struggling and uh god came to him and uh he gave him a picture of a baseball game and uh david was up to bat and, and the lord asked him he said can you bunt and for you those not familiar with baseball you know you anybody can bunt you just stick out the bat and in the in you know real easy rather than swinging and uh and David said to the Lord, he said, he said, man, I'm in the hospital. I gave us money. Didn't seem like it was a good thing to do. He said, I, he said, Lord, what is Button going to do? And Lord spoke to him and said, you just get on first because I'm coming up next. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. This, this is a true story. This is a true story. God, right after this, walks into the hospital room. Well, first of all, he came out of the hospital just fine. But the guy walks in the hospital room and gives him a check for $50,000. And David just rejoicing now. Glory to God. See, he got on first. Jesus is now at bat, right? Amen. And touched him. And then David's excited. And he said, you know what's good about that? He said, you already paid your tithe yesterday when you gave that 5000 Amen. Into the offering. But see, we need to expect God now. We need to get excited about now we're expecting Jesus to come. Amen. Now, just like with that, you know, what we put in the bulletin, what was written by Andrew Murray that we started off by reading, you know, there is a, a battle. There is a, you know, it, it's a, we need to use our faith. Amen. But glory to God, we enter into a place where there's joy, which turns into excitement in the soul. Joy in the spirit will turn into excitement in the soul, which will cause expectation in your heart which God will honor, amen, with confirming power. Glory to God. So now we're entering into this place. But again, there's a, there's a decision to be made here because this is a realm that most Christians don't enter into because of the hurts that we have experienced. So, so many people, it's like, man, I'd like to enter into that, but there are fears associated with the familiarity of being hurt in the past. Yeah, you know, and because the devil's right there to say, yeah, you have that crazy day. You have that happy day, but you know what? You know what? It's all, you're going to end up getting hurt. It's not going to be like, you know, you're saying it is. And we have to make a decision and say, you know what? Here's the deal. I believe in my heart. You know, that the Bible says that God will uh, move according to my earnest expectation, faith and expectation in Philippians 1, 20. And I believe in John 10, 10 that Jesus, through his blood, we can have a life that's profoundly abundant. So we come to a place where, uh, you know what, we say, you know what? Even though our soul is saying it's too good to be true, even though our soul is bringing up the past, even though our, the demons are right there and saying it can't be this good, you've got to say, you know what? I'm not going to stay down here in 30-fold. I'm going to enter into the place of joy, excitement, expectation a hundredfold because that is going high and that's where Jesus is at. Amen? But it does take a decision. Because, again, I, see, I hear so many Christians saying, I tried that, and it didn't work. And I always say, well, that's why it didn't work. You don't try the word, amen. You do the word until it manifests on your behalf. And that's why we need to encourage one another. But so many Christians are in disillusionment. I mean, how many Christians do you know 
that aren't, aren't, you know, walking like they should walk. They're backslidden, they're lukewarm, and they're afraid to say, you know what? All is well. They're afraid to say, I'm not going to get hurt. They're afraid to say, you know what? The latter is going to be better than the former. They're afraid to say it. And God's saying, you know what? Get out of the boat. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. You talk about 30, 60, 100 fold. The men in the boat were 30 fold. Amen? Man, probably the men in the boat were 60 fold were those that came, you know, to almost stepping out and saying, me too. You know what I'm saying? But Peter's on the water. Glory to God. He entered into the hundredfold of walking on the water because he went out, hallelujah, of the boat and he entered into a place, glory to God, where, whoo, man, he's, he entered into a realm that nobody else entered into. Why? Because he's entered into a hundredfold. Glory to God. All right. So let's, let's just, in, in closing, the last few, 10 minutes or so, let's enter in the how we enter into this practically. Glory to God. The key is understanding what God's speaking. He's calling us higher. Amen. When something doesn't seem to be working, don't go somewhere else and say, well, I'm going to try this theology or I'm going to try this or that. Go deeper. Amen. Go deeper and go higher. Glory to God. Amen. Go deeper into God's grace and mercy. Go deeper into what he's speaking. Glory to Jesus. But then we need to understand that to enter into the higher places, there's a cost. Amen? Glory to God. And we go back to the different areas that we talked about. We go back and say, God, I need to enter in perhaps in a little bit more time in the Word. I need to enter into this. I need a greater degree of revelation. Amen? Lord, I, I, cause me to enter into a greater degree of love. Amen. Cause me to enter into a greater degree of humility. Lord, where I'm missing it, let me see where I'm missing it so I can enter in, praise God, to changing some things. Amen. Glory to God. So we enter in, so humility is involved. Then we talked about levels of intimacy, joy, excitement, expectation. There's a cost. Amen. And, you know, to admit that there's a need. Amen. And that you're willing to do what needs to be done. Praise God. And that's where it starts in all of us. Again, negating good and replacing it with better and best. Glory to God. And it's going to take humility. It's going to take us coming into a place and saying, God... I, I need to, to, to spend more time here. I need to make a decision to forgive. Or I, I need to enter into by faith saying, you know what? All is well. Everything's okay even when there's a battle and it doesn't look well. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. All right. And so, again, it can be familiar sin. It can be arrogance. It can be more word time, a number of things. And then we need to be vulnerable. Glory to God. We need to be vulnerable. Because, guys, we, we say this all the time, but fruit is produced out on a limb. Amen? Glory to God. So we need to be vulnerable and say, you know what? When my soul says, the last time you stepped out this way, you got hurt. When my soul says, you know what? It can't be this good. When somebody comes to me and says, you know, I tried that and I got hurt. You know what? You got to say, I'm making myself vulnerable and I'm going to live by my heart rather than by my head. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. And then, again, not being afraid to fully let go and let God. Uh, you know, I shared this before, but again, it bears repetition. It's one of the uh, best examples I can give. Uh, there was uh, a friend of mine. He was involved in campus ministry like we were. And uh, I was sharing with him about the, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And uh, he said, you know what, I I'm not into that, you know, speaking in tongues, I I'm not into that stuff. And he, and he gave me all these scripture verses, you know, that's gone away with the last apostle and stuff. And, you know, so I share with them, you know, and so we're sharing the word together. But to be honest with you, he had a, a seemly position in um, a, a certain group on, on, on the campus he was at. And he said, I just don't want to go with this. So I, once in a while, I bring it up. And... So, and I asked him, I said, what would keep you back from this? And he got, he said, well, you know, I, I might lose my position 
and this organization, uh, this and that. So I, so I said to so the reason that you're not entering into it, going higher, is because you're afraid of being hurt. You're afraid of losing a position, he said. But anyways, and then that he backtracked. Long story short, man, he is uh, at a, he had a little girl, I think she was four or five, four, I think at the time, they're at a gymnastic deal. You know what I'm saying? A practice, and he's watching her. And uh, he goes in, she goes into a man, a serious seizure. I mean, she is not a good deal. And, and you know, he, gra- he, take, he grabs her and uh, is, is with her. And the Holy Ghost just spoke to me, said, I want you to go higher. Okay, I want you to go higher. But I need you now to enter in to praying in the Spirit, praying in other tongues for your daughter. And this guy, he's uh, kind of a tough guy, a real good athlete. But he, see, here's what, here's what broke him, was his need for his daughter to be helped. I'm in front of everybody. He just puts up his hands, said, Jesus baptized me in the Spirit, and starts speaking tongues in front of everybody. Just crying out, you know, in other tongues. And his daughter, it's like you step your fingers, came out of it. And uh, glory to God. And uh, oh, mm, hallelujah. And uh, it changed him. You know what I'm saying? It changed. But here's what I want you to see. God will never ask you to do something that's not, that's not going to profit you. He's not going to ask you to humble yourself. He's not going to ask you to spend more time here or there or do this or that without an end in mind. Amen? Amen. He wants us to understand that it is so worth it. Glory to God. There are times where you're fasting and the only thing you feel you get is hungry. I mean, there are times where it doesn't look like it's working. But God wants us to understand. As we enter in to saying, God, I will do anything. And I will do everything to be more intimate with you, to, be, to go higher, to be in the spirit more. I'll tell you what, God will honor that more than anything. It says Jesus learned obedience by the things he suffered in the book of Hebrews. Wow, what's that mean? Well, he suffered betrayal. He suffered, man, you know, uh, <laughs> you know he was in the wilderness with the wild beasts. He entered in. Well, through, you know, through paying a price. Glory to God. So as we close today, I want to encourage you. In these areas where God's speaking to you, man, let go and let God. Amen? Because he's calling us higher. He's calling us to a greater degree of intimacy. He's calling us, man, to say, Lord, show me how to go higher. Amen? Show me. Glory to God. And then grace me. Not by my own flesh, but grace me by your spirit and let me see glory to God. Hallelujah. Just the change it's going to make. Amen? The change that it is going to make. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's just pray for a little bit, okay? Father, we give you praise. We give you glory and honor. Father, the areas in our life where you're speaking to us to go higher, help us to enter into the place where we will do anything and everything just to be more intimate with you, to be a greater soul winner, Lord God, for you. Lord, to enter in, Father God, to greater victory in our personal lives, that we might be people, Lord God, of humility. We might be people of love, people of revelation, people, God, of great intimacy with you, people of so of great freedom, hallelujah, where we're not afraid of anything because we know Jesus. Whoo, hallelujah, that what you said, it will come to pass. Help us to know God. Whoo, hallelujah. As what we're, mm, Jesus, I just says, as we enter into what's too difficult for us in the natural, you'll do through us and for us. And Lord God, you will bring to pass God, what our hearts are crying out for. Lord, we give you praise and worship. We thank you that your greatest desire is for us to be conformed to the image of Jesus. And Lord God, we just praise you and worship you. That what you're calling us into, glory to God, mm, to give more of ourselves to you, is for one purpose. And that's so we can be awesomely free, 
dangerous to the devil, but never fearful of him. Who a man and woman of strength, courage. Glory to God and victory. Glory to God. And again, Father, we worship you for your son is our example. Glory to God. And you're just calling us higher. Higher. So we can be in the spirit in a way, Lord God. Mm. Again, that we are people of revelation. Great revelation. People of love. Humility. Intimacy. Ooh, and fully excited, joyful, excited and expectant. Woo! Hallelujah. Because as we know, as we let go, Lord, you come. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor. Just to us here today, to those listening by CD, watching by video, or those watching by television. Right now, I, I, I just want you just to take a minute and say, God, show me areas in my life that I need to ask grace for. Show me areas in my life that I need to humble myself unto. Show me, God, just how to be more intimate with you. To be more like Jesus. And as God is revealing these things. Wow. Mm. Don't be afraid of them. Because God will cause you to enter into them. And God will confirm. Your obedience. That comes through grace. Glory to God. Right now if anybody is. That listening, watching. That hasn't come to Jesus. That you're, you're not walking with Jesus. You've never accepted Jesus. Or you've never, you're, you're not walking with Jesus like you should. Do not put it off. Right now, just say, Jesus, I'm going to make this decision to enter in to life. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. And some of you are just really down low. God will lift you up. Just say, Jesus. Come into my life right now. And if you did that, he did that. He did what you asked him. Lord God, let's stand. Amen. Glory to God. I I see the Lord saying that, whoo, what the devil makes look so difficult. God is going to cause you, whoo, to overcome what seems so difficult. Glory to God. And that, really, that vision that Betty had that we shared, where the, you know, the enemy was in battle array, but he had no covering. Woo, glory to God. Mm, don't let the devil steal. Amen? Anything God has for you. Don't let him lie and intimidate, because it's the time. Amen? To enter in high. Glory to God. To enter in to great heights. Amen. I just had a, a word of knowledge. It was, I heard the name Frederick. And, and I, I just saw the word house. And I felt like the Lord saying that God's going to bless uh, households. So just to receive that, okay? Glory to God. Are you happy today? Amen. Glory to God. Are you going to go higher? Amen. It's the time. Amen. I believe God's speaking this message to the body of Christ everywhere. And it's going to be critical to whether we enter into it or not. Amen? Glory to God. He's worthy. Amen.